this is Kim of Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and welcome to episode one of ECT TV. I am so excited that you're here for episode one of ECT TV. So, a couple of things before we get started. Um, each week I'm going to have a new episode on Monday. It will be posted to YouTube by 7 p.m. on Monday night. And there will also be a post on my blog to go along with the TV episode. Um, and there will be a little bit extra on my blog post. So if you go to www.kimberlycoler.com, you'll find the blog post there. And my name is spelled K-I-M-B-E-R-L-I-E-K-O-H-L-E-R.com. And I'll put a link to it in the description below. Um, as well, if you sign up for my email newsletter, um, each week I will send out a PDF of the project that we do. That way you can print it out easily and take it to your work table and refer to it. So while you're at my website, look for that link as well. So since today is the very first episode of ECT TV, which stands for Emerging Creatively Tutorials TV, um, I thought I'd give you a little bit of background of how I got started making jewelry to begin with. So when I was a kid, I used to make all kinds of things. I made cards for my parents. Um, I made, I sewed. I made teddy bears. I made hair scrunchies for your hair, um, and just all kinds of things. But one of the things I made was bracelets made from elastic stretchy cord. So I used to make those all the time. And I had this bag, it was like a purse, it was pink, and I had a unicorn on it, which of course were my favorite things, and it was just full of beads, and the beads were just in there. There was no rhyme or reason. They were all together. I would randomly put the beads on, the elastic tied up, give it to my friends. So it ends up that for a while through high school and college, um, I kind of gave up the whole jewelry making thing. I quit kind of being creative, um, but I actually had a different way of being creative, which was music. So um, I played clarinet and saxophone, and I went to college and studied music as well. And then, about almost 10 years ago, I started seeing all this cool handmade jewelry. And I got thinking, hey, I used to make jewelry. What happened to that unicorn bag? And I looked for it, and I found it, and there were all my beads, and I dug in, and I started making jewelry again. And then, I was so excited to go to bead stores and find all these amazing beads and supplies and all these cool resources so you can make all kinds of jewelry. It went such a long way since I was making jewelry with the little elastic uh, cord. So that's how I got started again and I'll never look back. <laughs> so um, in honor of new beginnings and how I got my beginnings, today I'm going to show you how to make an elastic cord bracelet with beads. Um, you don't need any kind of special tools for this. You just need scissors. Um, you can get the cord at any like craft store. You, I, I know they sell it at AC Moore or Michaels, or if you have a bead store, they probably sell it there. And then you just need some beads. And I'm actually gonna give you a little tip for getting beads on the cheap um, if you don't wanna go to a bead store or I know a lot of people who follow me tell me they don't have access to beads close to them. So I have a little tip for that a little bit later. Um, so let's get started on our project. We're going to go over to my work table and get this thing started. Hi, so now we're at my work table and I'm going to show you how to make an elastic beaded bracelet. Um, so this is what you'll need. This is elastic bead cord. Um, it's clear. I got this either at AC Moore or Michaels. You can find it basically at any craft supply store. Um, you could probably find it at Joann's um, or whatever you have 
in your area. And then you need some beads. And these are some pretty awesome beads that I got from Happy Mango Beads, which is actually my favorite bead store. And these are recycled red beads. Now, um, the only thing I have to say about beads when using elastic cord is that you want it to have a relatively big hole um, just to make it easier. If you're using smaller beads, it's it's more difficult and frustrating and time-consuming to bead those beads. So I like to use beads with um, bigger holes when I'm doing this project. Um, and you can use any beads you want. And then you'll just need a pair of scissors to cut the cord. And then I also had some of these beads in my uh, collection. They're little hearts, and they have this little bail on them. So, um, they're, they're actually charms, I'd say. And so they'll have little hearts dangling, which I thought would be cute, especially since Valentine's Day is coming up. So I'm going to put those on as well. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when making your bracelet is come up with your design. Now, if you're using all just one kind of bead, you can probably just start stringing and it's not that big of a deal. But I'm adding in these little hearts, so I wanted to make sure they were somewhat evenly spaced. The other thing I want to say is you'll see this one here on the end. Um, an elastic bracelet will be completely round so it won't kind of look like there's a beginning or end. So I wanted to place one of these charms in between these two sections too. So they were evenly spaced. Okay. So the next thing that you want to do is cut your elastic cord um, to the right size. And um, this is very hard to see because I'm using clear cord on video, but um, they have this little protector you take off, you find the end, and then the way I do this is I simply just measure around my wrist, and then leave several extra inches, say approximately six or so on either end, um, you want to leave room for your knot. So that's what you do there. And now you can just start beading. So I'm going to grab my beads and you just slide them right on. Now, I've been doing this a while, so I simply just hold the end of the wire or the cord and bead my beads and they don't fall off. But you can also take a piece of tape and just tape it down to your work surface and then that makes it a little easier. Um, or they do make little bead stops you can put right on here. Um, it's like a little spiral and um, then you won't lose your beads at the end either. So we're going to go ahead and just place the beads on in the order that we designed. my bracelet all beaded. So now it's just time to tie the knot. Which, tying the knot on this bracelet is a little bit more um, complicated than just tying a knot. So I'm going to show you actually uh, with a piece of yarn so you can actually see how it's done because you cannot see the elastic cord. So, pretend this is the bracelet. And I will show you how to tie this knot. So, 
you'll start it like any normal knot, like you're tying your shoe. Um, so you just cross and put one end under and bring it back up. Then you do the same thing again. But before you pull it tight, you're going to wrap this end around again. Oops. And then this end around again. And then you pull the knot. Alright, let me show you one more time. Just make sure you have it. Here's our bracelet. These are the ends that we need to tie. So you cross, put one end under, and then you do it again like you're tying a double knot. And then you put each end around again. And then you pull the knot. And that makes for a more secure bracelet. Okay, so on elastic, it becomes a lot more awkward. But I will try to show you how to do it. And it, if it is very awkward, you can leave a lot more extra elastic on the end and it's easier to do then. Alright, there I did it. I'm pulling it tight. Now, before you cut these ends off, I always like to check to make sure they're not... Nope, see? It's slipping. I must have messed it up. Um, always test it before you cut the ends off. So if you have to redo it again, you can. Sometimes you need to pull kind of both the bottom part, the part where the bracelet is, and this. Okay. And then, when you're positive, it's secure. Trim off the end. And then, which my bracelet did this on its own. Um, I like to just hide the knot under a bead. And then there you have it. There's our bracelet. So, if you want to learn how to customize this and personalize this even more, Come to my blog at www.kimberlycoler.com, which is K-I-M-B-E-R-L-I-E-K-O-H-L-E-R.com, and I'll have more ideas for creativity there. So now I have a quick little tip on how to find beads, even if you don't have a bead store near you, or you think beads might be out of your price range. So here's the thing, I know that beads are expensive, and not everybody has a bead store near them, because people have told me that. But here's a little secret, you can find a lot of awesome stuff at thrift stores, Goodwill, um, Salvation Army, all those places. They sell old jewelry, and I'm going to give you a few quick tips on how to find jewelry to take apart to use for um, your jewelry projects. So I'm just going to show you a few things that I have purchased. Um, and some of these I've already taken apart and used part of. 
so here's something I bought. Um, it's this really pretty light blue color. It has these really funky beads. This was two dollars. It has awesome beads, um, and you, I can take them apart and use them in my jewelry. Now, when you're going to a thrift store to find jewelry, you will find all sorts of things. Now, this necklace, I don't know, it's not that bad by itself. I don't hate it or anything. I probably would never wear it. However, um, what I really liked was these cool beads. And I will take it apart. Now, here's the thing. You have to look to make sure that you're not accidentally purchasing one of those necklaces that are kind of like the Mardi Gras necklaces or whatever where all the beads are fused together. So make sure that is the one tip you need to look for. Um, the other thing, like I said, I like the beads on here. So maybe you hate the design of the necklace. Who cares? You're going to tear it apart anyway. But you really like certain beads. Get it. Especially this had $2 price tag and that is great. And not only that, um, the clasp still is pretty in good shape. There's a little bit of chain on here. I can use this for several projects. Um, here's something I purchased, which I, I think it's just a very long necklace. But what I liked about it were these cool beads. And I actually got this at a yard sale. So, um, these are all wooden beads. They're all separate. There are a ton of beads. I, I, I picked this up for like a quarter or something. So, all you have to do is tear it apart and start using the beads. Um, this necklace I already took apart. And it was awful, in my opinion, <laughs> altogether. But, it has these really pretty, like, crystal blue beads. Um, so, I've already taken it apart and started using it. This one was one of the pricier things I've purchased, to be honest with you, it, at $4. But, I know I've already made several necklaces, and I had tons and tons of beads, and I sold more. Um, so, basically what you're looking for is something that catches your eye, um, something you know like you can use, something in your price range. Um, make sure that the beads can be separated. Here's something I purchased, which is this cool, funky uh, bracelet, which I actually like by itself. But what I plan to do is add some charms to it and make it into a really funky, cool charm bracelet. So these are some ideas for you. So as far as the elastic uh, beaded bracelet goes, um, you're probably looking more for just like regular beads. Make sure you can cut the necklace apart and that the beads come apart. And um, head to your local thrift store and see what you can find and um, you're all good to go. Have fun! So that concludes our episode for this week. Um, I hope you liked it. Please leave me comments. Um, you, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, and remember, there's even more over at my website. So go to www.kimberlie.com and you can subscribe to my newsletter there. Um, get some more information about this project there. and all kinds of stuff. So thank you so much for joining me for episode one and I will see you next week for episode two.